Hi, welcome to my art studio. When I was setting up this space, it felt really important to me to have as many materials as possible on display. I often get ideas simply from seeing a material that I didn't know I had. Honestly, I'm kind of a pack rat. I will hold on to things for a long, long time. And a lot of the times that sparks an idea for me. So I tried to have things out. Honestly, I could be doing this better. A lot of my stuff is still in a closet and that's partially because I don't want to drill into the walls not knowing how long I'm going to be in this apartment for. My dream studio is one where the walls are covered in materials. So I keep some of the uglier things hidden away, like my scanner, which is probably my most used art tool, but it's hidden away in a closet because I don't like the look of it. I have this station in the closet that is really helpful. It has like knickknacks and different types of materials like feathers and pipe cleaners and foam and felt, you know, just the regular stuff. <laughs> I also try to make things functional. So right by my scanner, I have a paper tray because I always end up taking the papers from the scanner and needing to put them somewhere. Periodically, I'll go out and organize it and clean it up. This desk I love because it's wide enough for me to do multiple things on it. Often I'll have my laptop, I'll have some magazines strewn across it, scissors out and markers, and I have like four different things going on on my desk at once. Sometimes I've fantasized about having a smaller desk, like something cute and pretty, but I just don't think that would be functional. But I also knew I really wanted plants in here. These plants are actually not doing too hot. <laughs> Uh, that's my fault. I've been slack about watering. I heard that when they start growing these aerial roots, it means they want more soil, but um, we're just gonna ignore that for now. <laughs> a few days ago, David was helping me organize a few things in the studio, and he found a box in the closet of all the Polaroids that I had taken when we were in New York. That used to be a material I would use regularly in my art. I would draw around a Polaroid, and that would be an art piece. And I sort of like drifted away from that stylistically, but actually sometimes they do inspire new pieces of art, so that's cool too. I also noticed that I used a Polaroid in one of my first fasting videos, and I think that was because David had brought out the Polaroid and found a place for it out in the open, not hidden away in the closet. And it's cool to think that art piece came out the way that it did because of the placement of my materials. If the Polaroid had been up and away in a box in the closet, that probably wouldn't have come to mind as something I could use for that video. One thing that's super functional for me in this studio is this little chest of drawers by my desk. I have sort of semi-organized each drawer. So the first one is kind of tech stuff, cords, and some easy access camera equipment. The second drawer is just important documents, like stuff I'll need for taxes and things like that. Two out of four of the art pieces I have hung up are from my friend Josefina, who is an amazing artist. She does these paper cuttings and they're so beautiful. Yeah, I highly recommend to check her out. She's super cool. This this little booklet was also given to me as a wedding present by one of my best friends, Shireen, and her husband, James. She was one of my first friends to get married before I did. She gave me this little booklet of advice that I really treasure. And I have this book called You Are an Artist. Sometimes I'll use it if I'm like struggling for an idea. It has different art project ideas. But I also just love the sentiment, it kind of feels like an affirmation for me. I have this portrait that was done by Amanda Oleander of me. Her workshop was really meaningful to me. I think it was one of the first places where I felt like, okay, I could potentially make this a career. Like I said, I keep ugly things hidden away. I have my hard drive, which is in an ugly case. I hide it behind this white hat. It's really important to me that my space kind of gives me good feelings and is pretty to me. I don't think it needs to be pretty to other people, but it needs to be a space that I like to come into. Another thing that I was thinking about when I was setting up this space was having at least one wall that looked good enough to film in front of. I needed like a space in my studio where I could just quickly set up the camera and shoot. Lighting is another thing that was really important to me. David helped me find these lights that were not too expensive, but really good quality and easy to use. These lights are so helpful. More often than not, I use them at nighttime, not only for like good lighting for me to create my artwork, but also for me to shoot videos and things like that. I have different like modes of lighting. So we can have like chill and cozy with just a couple of these lights on, maybe my desk lamp 
or I can really make it feel like it's daytime in here even though it's nighttime. Some things I'm thinking of changing in this space are potentially adding more soundproofing, some soundproofing on the ceiling and maybe in the corners. Ideally getting more stuff up on the walls so that I have more materials out in front of me. In my wildest dreams, I would love to have like a permanent top-down setup, but you know, slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> I'll keep you updated.